This is the Republic F-105B supersonic fighter bomber with its gun and ammunition, as well as the various bombs, rockets, missiles, and auxiliary fuel tanks that it can carry. Unlike other contemporary fighter bombers, the F-105 has a bomb bay. The bomb bay doors retract inwardly to obtain minimum drag and buffeting at supersonic speeds. Accurate bomb releases at all speeds are made possible by this ejection mechanism which utilizes a pneumatic cylinder to provide a 19,000 pound ejection force. The convenient height and accessibility of the bomb rack permits rapid installation of bombs. If a bomb loader such as this MJ-1 unit is not available, the ejection mechanism can be used as a hoist. The bomb bay of the F-105 can also accommodate a 390-gallon auxiliary fuel tank. It can also take this Republic-designed practice bomb dispenser. The practice bomb dispenser can carry six of these small bombs and provides a means for more economical pilot training. As shown here, the small practice bombs can be easily installed by two men. The practice bomb dispenser has its own retractable doors and can be carried on external bomb racks. In addition to a bomb bay, two external bomb racks can be quickly installed under each wing of the F-105. Again, convenient height and location permits the ground crew to rapidly install bombs. The inboard bomb rack can carry bombs up to 3,000 pounds in weight or auxiliary fuel tanks up to a 450 gallon capacity. Bombs up to 1,000 pounds in weight can be suspended from the outboard bomb rack. The inboard and outboard bomb racks can also be used to carry rocket pods. With four 1,000-pound bombs under its wings, this F-105B is capable of attacking targets over 700 nautical miles from its base. Externally carried 750-pound bombs have been released at supersonic speeds by low and high toss methods. Release of externally carried 1,000 pound bombs has also been demonstrated at supersonic speeds. Internally carried bombs have been released in level flight at speeds in excess of Mach 1.5. By the use of this easily installed adapter, the F-105 can be rapidly converted to carry Sidewinder missiles under each wing. With Sidewinder missiles installed at the outboard bomb rack positions, the inboard bomb racks can be used to carry 450 gallon fuel tanks for additional range and endurance. conducted to date have demonstrated satisfactory sidewinder launchings at altitudes up to 35,000 feet with the airplane flying at one and one half times the speed of sound. The effectiveness of the sidewinder is shown in this motion picture of a sidewinder overtaking and destroying a previously launched five inch high velocity aircraft rocket.
For strafing of ground targets, as well as attacks against enemy aircraft, the F-105 is provided with a 20 millimeter Vulcan gun. 1,100 shells for this gun can be rapidly loaded into the conveniently located ammunition box. The Vulcan gun installation in the F-105 has a firing rate of 6,000 shells per minute. This high firing rate has been demonstrated at supersonic and subsonic speeds at all altitudes. The control and stability of the airplane along with the high firing rate of its gun installation, assures successful ground attacks while flying at high speeds at low altitudes. From the combat pilot's viewpoint, one of the more important flight characteristics of an airplane is its ability to recover from an inadvertent spin. To determine this ability, a spin test program was conducted during the first three months of 1959. Before beginning actual spin tests, wind tunnel investigations were conducted and the test airplane was modified to accommodate a spin recovery parachute. The spins were entered at altitudes above 40,000 feet and were held from one half to five turns before recovery was attempted. As you see here, the airplane spins at a fairly slow rate and has a tendency to hesitate and level off at the completion of a turn. This view of a spin was photographed by a camera mounted in the fin of the test airplane. You can see when the pilot attempts recovery by watching the movement of the spoiler at the lower right hand corner of the picture. As you have just seen, the spin was completely stopped one half turn after the pilot implemented recovery procedure. A total of 47 spins were performed during the F-105 spin test program. The program substantiated earlier wind tunnel tests and was completed without using the emergency spin recovery parachute. The spin recovery procedure for the F-105 airplane is similar to that for the F-84F.